Hi, I'm Wallace. Welcome to my booktube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about travel. Sometimes it's fun to read about where you're going before you get there. I personally like to learn about where I'm going because otherwise the things that I'm seeing don't have as much relevance to me. I happen to be a big history geek, so I like to know why am I looking at this building? <laughs> what does it have to do with anything I should be interested in? And hopefully I've read something about it and therefore know about it. So that is why I like to read before I go travel. Um, I often get asked for recommendations about what to read before people go places. Uh, so I'm going to start making a few of these videos and this is the first one and it's about Paris. Paris is one of my favorite places in the world. I've been there a few times and I absolutely love it. It's a charming city. There are tons of people so it is very busy but it doesn't feel as busy as somewhere like New York or London. It's easy to get around. It has a very rich history um, and there's a ton of books that you can read about it which is great. It's definitely one of the cities that lends itself uh, to the literary prone. So I'm going to start off with the fiction. Madame Tussauds is a book by Michelle Moran. I don't own it. I got it from the library years ago um, and I know that it's still widely available at bookstores and libraries. In fact, my library right now is currently out of it. I tried to go get it so I could show you guys but people are still loving the book. So it's definitely a great one to pick up. It's about Madame Tussauds who started the wax museum, Madame Tussauds, which you've probably heard of. Um, she started that with her, or she didn't start it, her family started it before the French Revolution. And during the French Revolution, she was had become a woman by then and she became involved with the royal family. Um, this is her story of why the, Mac, the Wax Museum was so incredibly important actually for her survival. And uh, it incorporates some of the main players of the time. It also talks a lot about what was happening in different areas of Paris at the time and France in general, but definitely in different areas of Paris. So if you read it and you go to Paris, you will recognize a lot of the sites from the book. Um, it's probably, if you couldn't read anything else before you go to Paris, that is what I would read because it gives you so much information about the people that were really important in the structuring of the city and um, the way that France runs today and a lot of the sites that you're going to see have to do with stories that were part of this book. It's incredible. I mean, you can pay somebody to take you on a tour and you might still do that. Uh, you'll just know a little bit more. Otherwise, you can literally read this book and know quite a bit. Uh, it will also take you down some rabbit holes. So you'll be reading and you're going to want to learn a little bit more about some of the fictional things that she's talking about because she, obviously not all of them are fiction. You're going to want to learn a little bit more about what she's talking about in this story because while there is a fictional component to this story, so much of it is based on fact. It's just, it's a really interesting, great read um, and it's one that uh, is actually quite easy to read because it's so engaging. The next fictional book uh, was one that I mentioned last week during my book haul. It's The Shadow Queen by Sandra Galland and I have now read it and it's very good. I, I blew through it. It's um, actually about a real person who is not famous, you wouldn't know her name, but um, it's set in the 1600s and she comes from a theatrical family and they go from um, living in caves basically until to getting into Paris after the wars of her time. This is pre-revolutionary war and it talks about how she gets integrated with the royal family again and it talks a lot about the city and Paris as it's growing and becoming a bigger metropolis. Um, so again, it has a lot of really cool information about the city in general and the history of the city and I highly recommend this one either way because it's very good. Uh, the last one that I have that's historical fiction is Paris by Edward Rutherford and he's very popular he, uh, for writing great historical novels about places, England, Russia, New York, he, had, I, he has some set in Ireland, there, I mean there's a long list, he's been around for quite a while. Paris is one of his most recent, it's very, very good. Um, basically I'm highly recommending historical fiction over contemporary fiction. The Elegance of the Hedgehog is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, it's, a, it's a contemporary fiction book set in Paris, but 
more than telling you about the history of Paris, that just kind of gives you a taste of the culture. And that's something that you'll probably get once you get there. You're gonna be talking to people and walking around the city and you'll get a feel for that yourself. So while I recommend those books, of course, it's the historical fiction books that I think are gonna give you the most information about what you're actually seeing before you go. And that's kind of the structure of what's exciting about going to a new place is getting the information so that you can know why the building that you're walking past is really important or what happened in that square. Um, but the culture and the feeling of the people is something that you can experience just from being there, obviously. Well, one of the nonfiction books that I am going to tell you to read is uh, Marie Antoinette by Antonia Fraser. This is actually a biography of Marie Antoinette, hello, obviously, uh, that Sofia Coppola actually used this one for her movie, um, Marie Antoinette. So if you saw the movie with Kirsten Dunst, this is what it was based off of. They sell this book in Versailles. They sell a very limited number of books, DVDs, etc. Um, and this is one of the books and Sofia Coppola as Marie Antoinette is one of the DVDs. Um, basically just saying that Versailles does endorse it. The historians there do endorse this as a factual text. Another one is A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. It's incredibly famous. Most of you have heard of it. Anybody who watched Midnight in Paris and loved it have heard of this. Um, and it features a lot of the key players that were featured in uh, Midnight in Paris because he was focusing on this period of time that Hemingway was there and the whole lost generation of what they're called. Uh, Gertrude Stein basically named them because I believe it was Hemingway she was talking to and she said, Basically, you guys are a lost generation. Uh, so it's Fitzgerald, Dali, Picasso, Hemingway. I mean, so many people were there during the time that he lived there, and he was talking about them. There are pretty short chapters, only a few that are very long, and essays about that time period in Paris, and it's fascinating. You read this book, and then you go to Paris, and you're walking around, and you're like, oh, that is the coffee shop that Hemingway and Fitzgerald had that crazy conversation in. Or, oh, that's where Picasso did this that night. So I highly, highly recommend this one. You don't have to be a Hemingway fan to like it. It just has a lot, enough literary history in it and art history that I think it'll be fascinating regardless. And the last one is Shakespeare and Company, which Shakespeare and Company is the name of one of the most famous bookstores probably in the world, um, definitely in Paris. It's an American bookstore, and it was originally started by Sylvia Beach. The place where the bookstore is now is not the original place uh, where Sylvia Beach had her store, and I will um, put it in the, in the, not the comments, but in the section below, I'll link you to where the real, the original store was. The one that's now is obviously real, but it was not the original. Um, but that one that is there now has been there for decades and it's fantastic. I highly recommend going there. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's got some great history. And if you want to know about the actual history of Shakespeare and Company when Sylvia Beach was running it, and this is where, um, this is where Ernest Hemingway was hanging out. This is where James Joyce was hanging out. She actually had a bit of a publishing company when she published James Joyce's Ulysses, which is one of, like one of the most famous novels in English literature. So um, it's definitely worth a read. This one is is for people who are literary minded, the people who want to know more about that part of the history of Paris, which is very rich history. It's very interesting, but if you are not interested in that, this will be incredibly boring to you. Um, however, it was incredibly interesting to me because she's a fascinating woman and she had a really um, integral part of the whole literary community that was happening um, in the early 1900s in Paris. And uh, the last one, I have actually not read this one. It's called Before of Versailles it's by Carlene Cohen, and um, I've had this on my shelf, so I do plan on reading it. I haven't. This is just throwing it out there. Maybe some of you have read it, and you can tell me about it in the comments. It's basically about um, Louis XIV, the Sun King. He's also prominently featured in the Shadow Queen, so these are taking place around the same time. He's the one who built Versailles. He's the one that, like really went crazy with the opulence and the spending of the money and whatnot that uh, ended up creating problems for, I believe it was what, Louis the Sixteenth was it? That was married to Marie Antoinette that ended up creating the revolution in the first place. He was kind of uh, one of the jumping off points 
for that. So very, very interesting. Tons of books out there to read about it. If you're interested in Paris at all, um, even if you're not going, these are some great books to read. And if you are going, then I highly recommend reading them. Again, if you can only read one, Madame Tussauds uh, covers a really interesting portion of Paris history and will give you a really good overview of what you're seeing when you're there. If you have any um, anything to contribute, add it down below in the comment section. I will put the titles and the names of the authors down below as well. If you're watching this on my blog on Unputdownables, just click on through to YouTube and you'll be able to see the list below. Uh, also, if you have any videos that you wanna see of places that you're interested in learning more about books from that place, uh, let me know below. And I'll try to do more of these videos soon for other cities and countries. And thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Happy reading. Bye.